Hello friends, I am Gunam Adhivanan, Current Affairs Faculty at Offices IAS Academy. In this video, we will be discussing our 119th Current Affairs hit list topic, Dark Matter. Friends, in 1930s, an astronomer in America, he was observing a phenomena. What he was observing? Let us take solar system, okay? The planets which are closer to sun, which are closer to sun, they will be moving at a greater speed. The orbital velocity will be very, very high. The orbital velocity will be very high. If you take the orbital velocity of Neptune, that is somewhere around 5 kilometers per second. If you take the orbital velocity of Earth, that is somewhere around 30 kilometers per second. If you take orbital velocity of Mercury, I think that is somewhere around 40 to 50 kilometers, around 50 kilometers per second, 45 or 50 kilometers per second. Okay. So what does it mean? When you are closer to a star, the orbital velocity is high. Right? That means it is because of the force of attraction. When you move away from the star, the force of attraction falls the orbital velocity also falls. So what we are able to understand as you are moving away from the star, the star is very very heavy. So that is star is one thing which has more gravitational attraction. So when you move away from the gravitational attraction, the orbital velocity will be falling that we are able to understand. Now what that 19, 1930 what that uh, researcher observed. So he took some galaxy clusters. So galaxy, what is galaxy? Galaxy contains millions of solar systems. Millions of solar systems put together is one galaxy. Galaxy clusters means hundreds of thousands of galaxies, they are held together, okay, in universe. So galaxy clusters, let us take this is one. This is one galaxy cluster, okay. Inside this, inside this, we have many galaxies. We have many galaxies, they are held, they are held together. There are many galaxies, they are held together, they are held together. Now, all these galaxies, they will be revolving around the center point. All these galaxies, they will be revolving around the center points. They will be revolving around the center points, right? Friends, as we know, center point has some force of attraction and all the galaxies are revolving around the center point, right? This is one galaxy cluster. All these are galaxies, these are not planets, these are galaxies, okay. Going by the orbital velocity of these galaxies, the orbital velocity of this galaxy which is closer to the center point will be high. The orbital velocity of this galaxy, that will be low, this will be high, this will be low because it is far from the center, so orbital velocity should be low. The researchers in 1930, they observed that the orbital velocity of this planet, the, I mean this galaxy, the orbital velocity of this galaxy was very, very high than what they imagined, was very, very high than what they imagined. They got confused. If it has to be this high, the center should be very strong, the center should be very strong. But however, they are not able to see anything in center, there is nothing in center. But however, the orbital velocity of the galaxy at the end is very, very high. So they came to an understanding that we cannot say, since we cannot see anything, since we cannot see anything, we should not say there is nothing. There is something called as dark matter. This is holding all these galaxies together and it gives shape to all these, you know, components of universe. However, it was not appreciated. Many were not uh, accepting this theory. Only in 1970s, an astronomer from America, a woman astronomer, was explaining this concept differently, and people it, that explanation was, I mean, uh, gaining more attention. 
So what she was observing and what she explained. So assume that you are through telescopes, assume that through telescope you are trying to watch distant galaxies. So there is one galaxy here, there is another galaxy here. Now these galaxies they emit light. So through these light, by looking at this light you understand the galaxy. Now this galaxy they also emit light but that is blocked by the another galaxy, bigger galaxy, it is blocked but however the light from the small galaxy, so these rays, these rays can be seen by the telescope. Generally what happens, these rays, generally what happens, these rays when they come, they experience a bending, when they come, they experience some bending, they experience some bending, okay. These lights they bend, why they bend that concept is called as gravitational lensing, gravitational lensing. Since there is a heavier, heavier galaxy, since there is an heavier galaxy in the center here, this heavier galaxy that is going to distort the space time continuum, right. Just simply understand that particular space because of the heavier galaxy it is getting disturbed and that results in bending of light, right. So what in 1970, what that astronomer observed? The astronomer observed such bending of lights, but interestingly, there was no galaxy at the center. Without any galaxy at the center, that astronomer was able to observe some gravitational lensing. So she got confused. When there is a galaxy in between, gravitational lensing is understandable, but, but without anything in center, there is bending of light waves. Then only she realized, since there is nothing which we can see, we should not say there is nothing. There is something called as dark matter. This dark matter that is bending the light. So after this explanation study only, people started believing that there is something called as dark matter. This dark matter, they will not emit light. They will not radiate light, they will not reflect light, they will not absorb light, but they are bending lights. Since lights are getting, you know, bended, so we are able to understand that there is something called as dark matter. Friends, today, if you add all the matters in the earth, all the physical matters, this pen, this remote, this laptop, right, or myself, yourself, you add all the planets, stars, all put together, all physical matters which you see you put together, it constitute just 5 percentage of the universe. So once after the discovery of dark matter, researchers they were adding all the dark matters. Even after adding all the dark matters, with all the dark matters put together, it constitute just 27 percentage of universe. So normal matter constitute 5 percentage. Dark matter constitutes just 27 percentage. What about the remaining 68 percentage? What about the remaining 68 percentage? Friends, Edwin Hubble, Edwin Hubble, so his study, in the previous videos we discussed about the Hubble telescope, it was named after this Edwin Hubble in 1900s, right? He was observing some phenomena called as a red shift, okay, let us not go into that in detail. So he was observing some phenomena which was leading to Big Bang theory, which was explaining us the expansion of universe, right. Edwin Hubble's work was helping us to understand the expansion of universe. The universe is expanding. The distance between two galaxies the distance between two galaxies, it is constantly expanding, the distance is constantly expanding. So once it is expanding, there is space, we were thinking, we were thinking that the space is empty, we were thinking that the space is empty, but however, now various study, various studies, they are saying that the space, so the distance between two galaxies, it is expanding and the space is not empty, it is filled with some energy that is called as dark energy, that is called as dark energy. 
and this dark energy it come it constitute the remaining 68 percentage of the universe friends at least about dark matter there are various studies right we are able to understand the presence of dark matter but this dark energy it is still in hypothetical stage we have not seen dark energy we have not realized dark energy but by studying the gravitational interaction of various astronomical you know bodies celestial bodies we are able to understand the presence of this energy called as dark energy it is still in hypothetical stage but we believe that there is something called as dark energy the dark energy is a repulsive force it is opposite to force of attraction it is opposite to gravitational force it is a repulsive force it is believed that the remaining 68 percentage of universe is made up of this dark energy and this will be the supreme energy in the universe right so why we are discussing about dark matter so he is the one Fritz Zwicky in 1930s initially he observed the dark matter right so dark energy as a repulsive force it roughly it comes around 68 percentage of it makes up 68 percentage of universe so why in news Hubble Space Telescope I explained about Hubble Space Telescope while explaining 30 meter telescope topic if you have not watched that topic go and watch that video Hubble Space Telescope it has discovered the excessive presence of dark matter in a galaxy called as spiral galaxy NGC 5585 in that galaxy it observed the excessive presence of dark matter that is why it was in news right friends based on our discussion I have given a MCQ find out the right answer and give your answer in the comment section friends here uh, we have come up with a current affairs MCQ booklet which contains 600 MCQs in PDF format question booklet solution booklet right PDF uh, I mean MCQ is covering from June 2020 till November 2020 if you are interested you can buy by clicking the link given in the description box just click the link given in the description box it will guide you how to buy this PDF so here uh, we have I mean I have come up with I have given the features of my exclusive current affairs course so if you are interested you can go through the features of my course if you want to subscribe this course you can make a call to this number right friends Tomorrow I will meet you with another important, interesting, exciting topic. Till then, bye. Take care.